So we're here today for a NanoView Presents, a Focus on XM webinar series. And today's talk is from Dr. Robert Mamoon from Siloa. And he's going to talk about customized extracellular vesicles for preventative and therapeutic solutions. Really excited to see this today. So quickly, who are we at NanoView? At NanoView, we're enabling nanomedicine by bridging the gap that exists between the requirements of exosome researchers and the capabilities of existing analytical equipment to accurately detect and fully characterize exosomes and other extracellular vesicles. And how do we do that? Through single vesicle biomarker quantification. So we have a platform, the ExoView platform, with the ExoView R100 reader pictured on the right, and the chips, the ExoView chips have arrayed on them a microarray for different types of capture. And the stock chip we show here has an anti-CD63 lane, anti-CD81 lane, anti-CD9 lane, anti-CD4 and A lane, and nice type control. And you incubate the sample on top of the chip and your exosomes or EVs of interest will move onto the spots that capture them based on their display of the epitope. And then you have a chance to counter stain those EVs for up to three additional markers with fluorescence. And that gives you the ability to then image the spots and find all the different phenotypes that may be present for the marker combination you stained at the single EV level. So when we zoom in, we actually probe this for content at the individual vesicle level. And in addition, we can size these vesicles. So right here, we're showing four color, three color staining, so up to seven different phenotypes. And then you can size these independently in the label free mode. So you have a size distribution and detection of up to four surface markers multiplexed on the same spot and the spots are in replica. And these measurements will be composed of thousands and thousands of individual vesicles when you look at the different phenotypes present. And today, you, know, you can see there I've drawn these antibodies labeling the surface, but I've got an exciting announcement today as we introduce the ExoView cargo kits. So in fact, we're no longer limited to probing surface epitopes on the EVs that are captured. With this brand new cargo kit, which can be added to any current kit you get, it'll include an anti-centenin AF555 conjugate and the appropriate buffers and reagents to now fix, permeabilize, and stain your captured EVs for their protein cargo. So you can see, obviously, we're doing centenin. You could stain for alix. You could stain for other cargos maybe you'd put inside. And that's compatible with the current kits and the surface staining antibodies. So in that kit, you'd see anti-CD9 AF488, anti-CD63 AF647, and anti-centenin. So you're actually able to show the membranes are closed, stain the internal proteins, and stain the surface proteins while gathering your size data. So this is really exciting and you can add this onto any current kit. And here's a little knockout of an alix assay. So on the left, we show a HEC293T alix knockout. We can see in the red channel under alix on the CD81 capture spot, we don't have any staining when we have the alix knockout, even though we still see plenty of centenin staining in the same way. And our negative controls on the IgG spots look good. And in the wild type, we easily are able to open these and probe for both internal alix and centenin on the same chip and see excellent staining for both. So as an example, this is what you'd expect to be able to do. You can also turn this around instead of a knockout, ask a question like, is the protein of interest oriented one way or another in the membrane and solve that problem using a permeabilized and unpermeabilized chip. So opens a lot of doors for analysis of the internal protein content of your captured EVs now. And if you have any questions about it, you can feel free to reach out to us afterwards. And like I said, can go with any current kit. So exciting news today. But without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our special guest today, Dr. Robert Mamoun from Siloa in France. He's currently the CEO of Siloa, which is focused on exosomes. But he was previously a director at CNRS Montpellier University, focusing on antibody and vaccine development in the BSL-3 environment. He's also previously served as director of research at INSERM and was responsible for technology transfer from there. And he has had an extensive career covering various different roles at INSERM, focusing on exosomes and a wide variety of virology research themes. So who better today to tell us about customizing exosomes than Dr. Robert Mamoun? So thank you for joining us. Uh, so LOA itself focuses on the production of membrane proteins derived from extracellular vesicles for the purpose of developing novel drugs, therapeutic monoclonals, vaccines, and novel anti-infective preventative vaccines. So without further ado, I'll let Dr. Mamoun take it away and give us his talk. As we go through this, if you have questions, please use the chat feature to post your question at the end. I'll moderate them and feed them back and we can hear some nice answers. So thank you for that, everyone. And I will stop sharing, bring us back here. And 
Dr. Mamoon, go ahead and share your screen and take it away. Perfect. Okay. This is Okay, there it is. So thank you very much, uh, none of you, for giving the opportunity to present Siloa and the work we do. Uh, so we are moving on the beginning, sorry. So Siloa is a company dedicated to the customization of exosomes as a nanocell messenger to uh, develop therapeutic vectors, vaccines, and therapeutic antibodies. So in summary, what is the summary of uh, this uh, afternoon? I will present uh, the exosomes and after the Siloa exosome customization and how we do it and uh, some results on it. And after that, we, I will present two application, three application domains of uh, Siloa technology. And after, uh, probably, probably the most important, uh, at least for uh, ExoView and for you uh, people that uh, heard me, uh, information that are needed when working with EVs and the solutions that we have or we don't have on the uh, knowing the size, the number, the markers on the exosomes or EVs and the particular proteins that you are interested in. So uh, just a summary of what are the exosomes. I suppose that most of you know that. Exosomes are what we can call really magic bullets. They are produced in cell culture or in the body, everywhere that are naturally secreted by any organs of the body, all the organs of the body. They can go everywhere in the body, even passing the blood-brain barrier, and they can vectorize proteins and RNA. They interact for this, they interact specifically with cells, modifying their phenotypes. Uh, the, so one of the applications and the property that interests most uh, uh, Siloa is the fact that uh, EV that can trigger strong and protective immune response. So exosomes and EVs are the perfect tool to generate amazing new biotherapeutics. So Siloa Propose customized exosomes for advanced medicines. It's a, a, Siloa is an exosome-based R&D powerhouse that customized since uh, nine years uh, exosomes to contain the chosen protein embedded either in the membrane or embedded in the in their cytosols. The process is fully natural by, because it is uh, tailored by the in vivo by the cells. So even membrane protein complexes are sorted with their fully native conformation. So we are dedicated to the development of new high potential therapies, and we have more than 15 years of research on biodrug development technology using exosomes. So we are focused mainly on three applications, monoclonal antibodies, again, challenging membrane protein targets, exosomes-based therapeutic vectors harboring different properties, and also, uh, what interests most uh, us actually due to the COVID uh, uh, time, uh, the development of virus and adjuvant-free vaccines. So, Siloa customized exosomes are based on two fully granted patents, uh, family of patents. One that, that concern the membrane proteins, and we can produce any fully native membrane proteins on exosomes. And the second one concerns the hydrophilic proteins that we can uh, target inside the cytosols. And this is a second family of patents. You can easily understand that with the fully native membrane proteins on exosomes, we can uh, ha have specific targeting of the exosomes. We can possibly recruit the immune cells and have some therapeutic function at the surface. The same for the proteins inside the, the cytosols of uh, exosomes or EVs, we can have therapeutic functions. So how it works? It's roughly, we construct a chimeric DNA 
with a DNA coding for membrane proteins, for instance, or other proteins fused to a pilot peptide. And this pilot peptide is the core of our technology and the core of all our patents. This chimeric DNA is introduced in the cell by transfection and all the job is now do done by the cells. The cells which uh, trans, um, <coughs> transcribe the DNA in RNA, the protein uh, is uh, uh, synthesized. If it is a membrane protein, protein, it goes through the ER and the Golgi. And after, the, after sorting, uh, uh, after uh, going out of the Golgi, the pilot peptide plays its role by targeting the protein in the exosome machinery by interacting with escort machinery. And then at the end, the exosomes are produced, are secreted are out of the cells, and they contain the protein of interest at the surface. This is quite simple. The, pro the protein that is sorted on the exosomes have the same topology as the protein at the cell surface. And for instance, here we have the synaptotagmin protein, CYP2, with two antibodies, one which recognizes the exo, uh, extracellular domain and one that recognizes the cytosolic domain. And you can see that only the antibody that recognizes the extracellular domain can immunocapture the exosome. So the proteins are, have the same topology as the protein at the surface of the cells. We can sort different proteins, several proteins, on the same exosomes. For instance, here we have produced uh, CD8 and CXCR4. And you can see that when we immunocapture the exosomes with anti-CXCR4, we have the presence in the same exosomes, immunocaptured exosomes of CD8. And the reverse is true when we capture the exosomes with anti-CD8 we have CXR4, monomers and dimers of CXR4. So this technology allows to produce membrane protein complexes out of cells like ion channel complexes, kinase receptor, GPCRs, homodimers or heterodimers of these proteins. The sorting uh, of these proteins is uh, with the te this technology, we can sort very major and functional membrane proteins. For instance, with this potassium ion channels that is present in three different uh, forms inside the cells, more or less immature. These two are immature and sequestered inside the cells. Here you have only the fully uh, glycosylated, fully mature form that is present and the fully, the only which is uh, functional. Thanks to the extraordinary machinery of the cells, only this major form are targeted on the exosomes. And these proteins on the exosomes is fully functional, at least for the binding for a natural endontal toxin ligand, as you can see here. And this means the fact that it is functional for the binding of the dendral toxin ligand means that the proteins is a, a, a tetramer, like his, here is a scheme, of the tetrama and here is a, a 3D structure. And even we, so we can uh, sort on the exosomes tetrama of uh, ion channels and even we can sort also accessory proteins in order to reconstitute an hetero octamer of this ion channel. This is a very robust technology that works with 90% uh, of, uh, of uh, success. And it works with any kind of protein like GPCRs, kinase receptors, ion channels, transporters, membrane proteins of viruses. As you can see here, any kind of membrane proteins can be produced and sorted on the exosomes, whatever their number of transmembrane domains. So what are the applications that we can uh, do with uh, these uh, exosomes, customized exosomes? The first one is a, an immune application, see the development of monoclonal antibodies against <coughs> challenging targets like a GPCR, for instance. If you add the GPCR to the surface, this is uh, fully native GPCR and we have all the arguments and all the proof that are, they are completely fully native. And you know, Find, probably that to have a very good antibodies, you need to have a very good uh, antigen. And here 
is the, this is the case. And we have also developed a protocol, special protocols adapted to the exosomes in order to trigger in mice very strong immune response, even for these two GPCRs, one and two, that are known to be non-immunogenic at all. So here we can obtain very strong immune response when the sera of these mice is, uh, are tested against GPCRs, harboring cells or control cells, you can see that there is two logs of magnitude of difference. So this works very well and so it's the basis to develop antibodies against uh, membrane proteins. The second application is the development of ther uh, base <coughs> therapeutic exosomes. So it's easy to imagine that if you add some proteins inside the exosome, they can harbor therapeutic functions and you add other proteins at the surface so that can be specific ligands of cells. Here is the example of neuronal cells and specific uh, exosome with a specific ligand of the uh, neuronal cells. And you can see that with the uh, uh, fluorescent protein inside it, you have a specific capture compared to the control exosomes, and this specificity is of 100 times more. The third application is the development of virus and adjuvant-free vaccines. Probably you know that the size of the exosomes are the same as uh, the size of viruses, enveloped viruses like HIV, coronaviruses, uh, flu viruses, etc. And even that the uh, escort machinery at the origin of the exosomes and of the extracellular vesicles is hijacked by the, the viruses by the, themselves. So here is the contrary. So we reverse. This is not the virus that use the uh, exosomes, but the exosomes that use the virus. So we just decorate the exosomes with the proteins of different kinds of viruses like HIV, like Zika, like Dengue, West Nile, Chikungunya here. And you can see that with this kind of exosomes that harbor the proteins of the Chikungunya, enveloped proteins of the Chikungunya, you can obtain very strong immune response in the mice, but detectable by ELISA and also neutralization of viruses. So I must remind you that these neutralizing antibodies against chikungunya virus have been obtained with no virus and with no adjuvant. Actually, of course, you can imagine easily that we use the same exosome basis to develop SARS-CoV-2 <coughs> vaccine. And we have obtained recently the, uh, the response and we have triggered immuro, both humoral and cellular immune response. This is what we do. So you can easily imagine that we need to do all this work. We need to acquire information uh, when working with these EVs or with these exosomes. We need to know the EV size, the EV number, their contents in regular markers like CD81, CD63, CD9, and the, their contents of other proteins, and particularly the proteins that we have added inside it. So, the techniques available to study the EVs are here. You can see that there is electron microscopy, transmission by scanning, uh, atomic force microscopy, cytofluorometry, dynamic light scattering or DLS, nano tracking analyzing like uh, <coughs> or NTA, Interferometry, nanoview captured EV, uh, on captured EVs, ELISA, and also SPR. Only these last te techniques and, uh, are uh, usable on the bench and in less than 40 hours. The other required particular material and they required uh, weeks or a lot of days. So you cannot use all days to detect and to analyze your production of uh, customized uh, exosomes or your uh, exosome that you have purified for natural, from natural fluid. So consider, uh, concerning the cytofluorometry analysis, this is probably the oldest uh, technique that was used with the exosomes. So you use latex beads on which you, uh, that you decorate 
by exosomes. You coat the exosomes by uh, <coughs> because they are active latex beads. You decorate your latex beads with the exosomes, so, so you can see that different kind of exosomes or extracellular vesicles are on the surface of the latex beads. You obtain by this way when you add fluorescent antibody, you obtain very strong and very sharp uh, re uh, results data, and that you can compare with the data with cells that uh, exhibit GPCR on the cells or GPCRs on the exosome, on the surface of the exosome. But you must know that this signal is strong, but this is only an average information, statistical average information of all the, the, the contents of all the exosomes. You cannot say these exosomes contain the, 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 this kind of protein and this one another kind of proteins. This is impossible with this technology. Last, next one. So there is also ELISA analysis, analysis and we do analyze ELISA analysis uh, all, the day, all days here in the laboratory. This is very simple. You thaw the tubes with the exosomes from the freezer and you put it on the uh, multi wells of your pla plates with uh, 96 wells. And you can see that with the exosomes, with the GPCR or exosomes, control exosomes, you can see that you can detect CD81 marker. And with exosomes, the, the same exosomes, control exosomes with, and GPCRs containing exosomes, only the, the GPCRs exosomes is detected by anti-GPCR and not the regular. What is very interesting in this technology, it's quite simple, but it detects only the external epitopes because they are the only accessible. And this is very interesting when you develop uh, therapeutic antibodies, for instance, against receptors. So you have also another kind of analysis, which is the SPR by Accor for people that know more, perhaps this know this name. Thanks to the small size of the exosomes, you can put it on the sensor chip, and the exosomes, when they contain a GPCR, for instance, at the surface, you can put the ligands and you obtain immediately all these uh, information, all the data in half of a day. With these data, you can know and we, you have immediate access of all interaction parameters and particularly the KG and uh, even the number of uh, proteins, uh, the epitopes at the surface of the exosomes. And this is very, very interesting. People know, uh, that work on these uh, topics know that uh, with cells, you need probably three to six months to have the same information. So now we are going on the EV size distribution and we are going on the comparison with different, uh, between different equipment in order to obtain this information. EV size distribution, you can hear and you can uh, read, read, read number, uh, all kinds of things on this. Uh, the size of the exosomes uh, EVs are between 30 nanometers to one uh, or 1,000 nanometers. Uh, there is all kind of things, but what is the real size of the exosomes? This is very difficult to say by uh, bench uh, equipment, but we must have some information. So we use, we compare different kinds of equipments nano tracking analysis from one brand, nano tracking analysis from another brand, the exoview here, and interferometry equipment. And we obtained also dynamic light scattering on the same uh, EVs, either large EVs that we have purified and small EVs. And for remind, you, I remind you that theoretically the EV size as detected by electron microscopy is in this range. So with uh, the two NTA, you have different results. This is very surprising because it's the same uh, technology. And one recognizes that there is large EVs and small, smaller EVs, and the other recognizes that all is uh, mean EVs and not large, medium EVs. With the nanoview, have something smaller, 
which is in which is in the range of what is detected by transmission electron microscopy and you have large semi large EVs and uh, other uh, smaller EVs with dynamic light scattering you have a completely different uh, picture with very large EVs and small uh, smaller EVs and with anti you have only one size of EVs and no difference so apparently there is a very pro this is a very problematic area to know what is the real size of the EVs and what is the equipment that we need to use to have the, uh, the real size of the EVs and I remember that uh, you that uh, the gold standard for the EVs is the nano tracking analysis and you can see that it's only results in a lot of other kind of results. So concerning the counting of the vesicles, large EVs, a batch of large EVs and a batch of small EVs, the NTA, we have just the comparison of NTA, brand one and brand two and the interferometry uh, equipment. And you can see you have what you want. You have a difference of five times between these two measures. And this is different here. So here also, the question of what kind of uh, equipment we must use is, is uh, there. So I suppose that this one, which recognizes all EVs are smaller uh, and even the smaller size is more correct, but I'm not sure. Next slide. So we move on the what is more important to, to us which is the composition of the EVs and the detections of markers on the EVs. So we have, com we compared three kinds of uh, equipment, NTA1, NTA2, ExoView equipment that claim that are, they are able to detect different markers using ant fluorescent antibodies. With the one brand, we have no, obtained no results at all. With the other one we obtain interesting results with for two markers but nothing with the other markers like CD63 and CD9 and for the CD81 we know that 41% of the, the EVs contain the CD81 and 28% contain the X proteins. This is very interesting, this is a first step but we don't know if the 28% are included in the 41 or if they are shared with other EVs or if they are completely excluded. So this is interesting but not sufficient. With the ExoView we have the percentage, we obtain the percentage of colocalization of the three EV markers CD81, CD63 and CD9 and also with the X protein. And I will show you uh, some results now on the, uh, the ExoView. Concerning the size and the fluorescent uh, as detected by different antibodies specific or CD9, CD63 and CD81. You can see that for all the size, we have the same shape and same distribution for the batch one, for the batch two and for the batch three. We have almost 50, uh, 57 to 65 uh, nanometer of size. So, Perhaps this is true, but I don't know. I suppose that it's not far from, uh, that they are true because they are not far from the results obtained by electron microscopy. Next, we look at the presence of the different proteins, markers, CD81, uh, CD, CD63, and our X1 proteins. So we have exosomes or EVs customized with the X1 proteins. And we are interested to know what are the EVs that contain this, mar this uh, X1 protein and how amount, how it, what is the amount of EVs that contain these proteins and does this protein is shared with, is uh, in the same EVs uh, as the uh, as a CD81 or CD63 or CD9. So here you can see some results. These are very interesting, but 
I can say don't focus on the amount that you obtain. So when you capture the EVs by CD81 antibody, you have CD81, of course, but not all probably. You have CD63, some, and we have plenty of Rix1 protein. When you capture with the CD63, we have the same kind of results. And with CD9, you have only the 63 CD63, which is a very low amount. So you know, the result is that only you know that you have your protein on some exosomes that contain CD9, some exosomes that contain CD63 and CD81. But you don't know anything about how many you have, uh, how many EVs that contains both. This is the first result. I will speak more about this kind of results uh, after in the next slide. But we must focus here on the content, the cytosolic content of proteins with the, ah, oh, there is a mistake here. It's the X2 protein cargo. So we have an X2 proteins that we have targeted inside the, the exosomes. And here we can see that at least the CD81 captured uh, exosomes or EVs contain this cargo. This is very interesting. Uh, and uh, I can say also that it is very interesting and because we have you, this is, uh, this was detected by rabbit anti X2 proteins using a secondary fluorescent antibody against against the uh, rabbit immunoglobulins. So this is the reason why we have very low uh, amount of uh, detections because it's a, a two-step uh, detection. So now we are moving on the most interesting results that we have obtained. And the, the reason why we have uh, chose in our laboratory this uh, exoview uh, equipment. This is the real added value of the exoview, exoview is the possibility to co-localize different proteins. Indeed, as uh, the Clayton said before, you can have a co-localization of each spot and you can see if some spots contain the CD, CD, uh, red, green, blue uh, color uh, antibodies so you can see what uh, what uh, what evs contain the protein of interest x1 that we have added on it and if this x1 protein is on the cd81 uh, exosomes or on cd63 when you process all these uh, images you obtain this kind of results in which you can see that in the CD81, you have 42% of EVs that contains the proteins that interest us. That's so, this means that we have targeted, we have sorted our proteins on the CD81 EVs. And very few contain CD63, even that Almost 30% of the CD81 uh, EVs contain CD63. Very few harbor the three proteins, CD81, CD63, and X1. And this is very important, very interesting, and it is the reason why we have acquired this equipment. So now the conclusions. For a routine work at the bench, I mean on EVs, and this I insist for routine work, so each day work, there is, in my opinion, in our opinion at Siloa, there is no reliable gold standard for EV size characterization. There is no reliable gold standard for EV counting, but with the ExoView, we, uh, ExoView allows to characterize the EVs in terms of regular EVs markers, specific, specific proteins, and also added proteins that we have, uh, with which we have customized the EVs. So ExoView is the only all days usable device that permits to characterize the compositions of our 
customize EVs. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you, Dr. Merman. The very, very nice talk. So uh, we've definitely got some questions out there. Are you ready to handle a few? Yeah. All right. We'll start. We'll start at the top. Um, you know, as we think about treatments, the first question comes from Melina, and she says, "Is or, or do we have any examples of this type of technology being used in cancer treatments? And do you have any opinions and perspectives as far as I think you could treat that as you know what what are major treatment centers that we're aiming at with these type of technologies?" So, uh, for the for the treatment of cancer. We don't work on it, but of course we know that there is a lot of different uh, uh, of different way to uh, characterize the biomarkers. So with with this kind with the exoview, this with this will be very interesting because you can uh, know what kind of EVs that contain the biomarker. This is for the uh, diagnostic uh, concerning. Uh, the use of the uh, customized exosomes that we produce, of course, there is a very, a very big field of applications, uh, particularly in the vaccine applications. For instance, if you add any, uh, any kind of uh, uh, antigen specific of a tumor on the surface of, uh, exo of uh, EVs, you can uh, probably trigger immune response against the, 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 the tumor. This is the first, uh, the first application. Of course, the second application is to, if you know a specific receptor on the surface of the tumor cells, and uh, if you have a ligand of this, uh, of this uh, receptor, you can add this ligand on the exosomes or on the EVs, and inside the EVs, you can add something which will be which will be will uh, be uh, uh, toxic, or you you can add at the surface of the exosome some proteins that will uh, recruit immune system in the localization of the tumor. So if there is a huge amount of applications in the, for for tumor to 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 uh, attack tumor. Yeah, no, definitely hot research area. Um, next question is from Medita, uh, and I think you're a great person to answer this, especially in the context of producing the vaccine type EVs. When it comes to vesicle integrity and importantly biochemical functionality of the enzymes within them, or in your case, the surface epitopes on them, do you prefer long-term storage at minus 20 or minus 80? <laughs> there is a lot of, uh, of uh, solutions. I cannot say you uh, the 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 response is uh, you can the, the the EVs are very stable, very very stable. So you can try is deep the the less stable is the protein that you are interested in that are at the surface. So the exosomes will go do the job. They are stable, but does your protein at the surface the the protein that interests you? Uh, are stable? I don't know. The, I think that uh, the the response, the answer is on the, the proteins and not on the exosomes, which are very stable, and you can keep it on minus twenty or minus eighty. The, there is no problem. Normally, there is no problem. All right. But I cannot say it during years, but at least for months, there is no problem. I think it's a, an open question in the field in general. So. Uh, it's same person, uh, camera settings, which you touch on the NTA1 versus NTA2, are the camera level settings comparable when we look at the two data sets, particularly how the sizing disparity for the small EVs on NTA2? The problem is, uh, one problem is a technical problem because the NTA cannot see uh, particles uh, smaller than, the, uh, the, uh, I don't know exactly the threshold, but uh, a certain threshold. This is the first problem, but I, we saw that one of the biggest problem is not on the equipment itself, it's on the software, because there is, they, the, the brands uh, sold you the, the equipment uh, and you think that you will put your EVs uh, uh, in these equipment and it will work immediately. No, this is not the case. You must work a lot 
on the software on the, and the, on the data as you obtain the raw data that you obtain in order to have a good uh, a good results and the, the results that you think you think but perhaps you don't know are reliable and this the difference between both uh, the, the two equipments is probably more in the algorithm uh, of mm. the software than in the, the equipment itself than the actual uh, scattering setup so they probably yeah. have some of the sensitivities to the light scatter, but the algorithms yeah. result in different results. All right, very good. Um, curious question here. Did, when you did the staining on the NTA systems, did you use the same antibodies that are used in the XOV platform or did you have different clones? Yes, exactly the same. Exactly the same? Very good. Yeah. For um, the membrane protein, it's not for the internal, for the cytosolic protein, but because uh, only the exoview only we uh, allow to, to perform this kind of uh, experiments. Okay, and then here's a more pointed question. On slide 24, so you may want to look, um, we said you cannot know how many EVs co-express the capture antibody and target protein, but we're wondering if the analysis software able to count the number that are co-stained for those two? Maybe we misheard the, I, I thought we said you did have the uh, count. One moment, because I don't know what is this. 24. 24. So you cannot say how many co-express, but I think we can say how yeah. many co-express the capture app exactly. and the target protein, yeah. right? And that was the takeaway. So, so the answer there, which anonymous attendee is, you can count the number that co-express, and that was nice. And then we've got uh, Alzheimer's disease. All right, and then understood correctly, you know, when you go, Paul, saw the, and maybe, can you put the, um, the interior circle bars back up, the 81 with the 63 inside with the yeah. next one? Yeah. Because um, he's asked that EVs can only be CD63 or only 81. In, no, in fact, here, when we show the two circles in each other, you're, you're indicating those are double stain. Those are inherently 81 and 63, and the major separate double stain population is X1 plus 81, right? Yes, exactly. And it's actually the triple stained population that's rare. That and this was 381 and X1 together is not common yeah. compared to. And this is the, the first time we obtain uh, this kind of results. And does that to you say that the loading pathways that X1 is loaded into the exomes for are somehow more dependent on the CD81 phenotyped vesicles? So they end up, it ends up there more often? Oh, I don't, I cannot say. For the, for the X1, this is the dependent of the CD81, but for all the, uh, all the uh, X protein, mm -hmm. we obtain the, the, the proteins are going on the CD63 vesicles. You know, the, the pilopeptide that is at the core of our technology mm -hmm. uh, have different um, uh, function. They, they, they trigger to go and to interact with the escort machinery at the origin of the, the extracellular vesicles. But we conserve all the wild type proteins and the, the wild type protein uh, co uh, contained signals for one pathway or another pathways. So this is the balance between the two pathways that, they, that uh, allow sorting with one kind of, of vesicles or other kind of vesicles. And, and in that same vein, uh, that considering how proteins go through PTMs, are those modifications responsible for the compartmentalization into the distinct EVs? And thus, you know, you mentioned you've got the native confirmation is what's loaded on exosomes. So do you think that that's indicative of the exosomes pathway when it shows up on a distinct vesicle type? As you said, in other cases, you see the CD63 vesicles are the ones holding your protein of interest. So it, it probably is pathway dependent for their compartmentalization into those, right? Uh, for the, for the, the, the conformation, the conformation of the membrane proteins at least are acquired inside the ER and the Golgi okay. and are controlled by very strict control qualities. And when the proteins goes out of the Golgi, they, are, they have their real conformation. And after that, I don't know what happens, but uh, the, the, the proteins is targeted either on the late on those uh, on those small compartments or on the plasma membrane. So, 
No, great. And then I think we'll end on this one. And this is a great question for everyone because you didn't touch on it in the EV. Obviously, you're doing a lot of cell culture, transfection, production type of EVs. What kind of isolation techniques do you use? You know, have you tried several? <laughs> and did you see any, do you see any differences when you, when you do that? We didn't really touch on it here, but I'd be curious to know too. You know, what are the workhorse isolation methods? Okay. Uh, just, uh, I cannot uh, answer to the first part of the, uh, the question, question because it's uh, a secret and it's a, a know-how and we, we must uh, conserve this know-how. Sure. What I can say is depending of the way you purify the, uh, the EVs, you have completely different uh, results. And it's uh, the reason why we are not uh, uh, groupy, uh, we are not very convinced by the way to uh, of uh, purifications of the EVs by ultra sanctifications because all people know that when you, you purify by this way, you have a lot of aggregates, a lot of uh, of proteins uh, uh, that that stick to the the, exo the EVs, and this is very complicated to obtain very nice populations of. Uh, single EVs at the end. So we have developed a, a, a property, a property uh, uh, protocol process in order to purify the EVs, in order to have a very well and very good uh, conservation of the shape and uh, of all the functionality. And now we have also this, uh, this uh, process that is upscalable and uh, that can be uh, put it in GMP conditions. All right, that is really great. There's one, there's one other question in the chat from Brian Dobush. I wanna, wanna get to Brian, the, um, the Fitzy intensity in the, over the cells was because there's many EVs per bead. When, we, when you measure by flow, they're, exactly. they're, they're exactly. required on a latex exactly. bead. That's why they sit over top of the cells. He had asked, exactly. why is the intensity the same? Because it's not single EV detection. It's bulky exactly. detection on a bead. Yeah, yeah, it's a very, you must be very careful because when you see such a results, you say, oh, it's fantastic. But it's nothing. It's nothing. You know only that you have some protein on your EVs, but we don't, don't know how much pro how much protein you have on each EV, and if all protein or EVs have the same amount or nothing on the on, on, of this protein at the surface. It's a just just a, a result that indicates that you have your protein on the EV. That's it. All right. I think that that will. Uh, someone, someone asked if you could go. Do you, do you want to comment any more on the the loading technology bit and how it how the the pilot peptide takes these things to the surface? We have a few minutes left. Yeah, oh, it's uh, it's originate from our uh, academic position uh, some times ago, and uh, we are we were working on uh, envelope protein of viruses, and we found that one proteins of these viruses of this vi of a virus. Uh, hijack the cellular escort machinery. So we work a lot on this uh, on this protein. Uh, we find that uh, a small peptide of uh, 45 amino acids contains uh, consensus sequence that are important to interact with the escort machinery and particularly with the TZ, TSG 101 protein and also perhaps Alex proteins. So this is the reason why that it works very well. And also these proteins uh, have a propensity to, uh, to dimerize or to trimerize. And this is important also to, for the, the sorting uh, in the, e, the EVs, yes. Well, I think that's, that's a great explanation. And I would want to say thank you to you for your talk today. And you're showing off that excellent data on the cargo standing, a good compliment to the release of the cargo kit. And I hope you really enjoy your XW and get some great data out of it. And thank you to everyone who attended today. And this will be, will be available much. online shortly on YouTube. And like and subscribe to our channel to see it. So without further ado, we're signing off for the day. And we'll see you in a few weeks. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.